sort of, you know, with, with these facts, you live and you learn, you get experience. You really have to factor in these pipes, the private investment portion of the SPAC. You want to see the size of it and you want to see the, the deadline of when that is going to hit. When ChargePoint just went crazy, was in the high 40s, I was like, okay, you know, now may be the best time for me to take profit on ChargePoint and get back in at a later date when the pipe hits. So that's going to be my plan. It may backfire and I may never get back into ChargePoint, but I'm, I'm a huge fan of the company. I think they're set up. I mean, you think about like Blink Charging, which is a, a small cap company and it's, you know, it's trading above ChargePoint or, or was, I think it tanked the other day, you know, less than a billion or a couple billion dollar market cap on that one. So ChargePoint. And then I also was, was pretty, pretty bullish about uh, EV box, TPGY which I think it has a faster growth trajectory. If you're looking at the revenue wise, um, they're actually going to grow faster than charge point. Either one of those, both of those are, you know, the, the pick and shovel plays of the space and um, they're super solid because of, we had the October, you know, sell off the, the nightmare spec sell off. I'm much more conservative now with holding long term and, you know, uh, pre merger. Awesome. Let's dive into 2021. So I know you cover a lot of SPACs, um, especially in the EV space. So, you know, if you had to pick and, you know, I won't throw out a number, but what are some of your favorite SPACs for 2021? And they can be, you know, unannounced deal, have a deal in place still waiting to vote or, you know, even former SPACs, but just kind of overall SPACs. What are some of your favorite 2021 plays? The high flyers are still going to probably uh, be high flyers in 2021. The, the charge points, EV box, uh, arrival, the Romeo power as well. Um, because I, I wasn't as bullish on uh, Romeo power initially. The one of the reasons I wasn't is because it was just like they were tied to Nikola motors, um, which is kind of like a scourge of the SPAC <laughs> industry, you know? So, um, but uh, when when they started making some deals, they they struck a deal with Lion Electric and a couple other players, and then you, then they kind of validated Romeo Romeo Power. So for sure, them as well. I think they're going to be high flyers. But I, like I told you, now I'm, I'm more conservative. You can look back in in 2020 to see this as well played out. All of the uh, gambling and online casino plays, uh, DraftKings, Rush Street Interactive, Golden Nugget. You, you see, all those are revenue generating, profitable companies and in a hot space. And they're, they're all doing well. I know there was a little bit of sell off with Golden Nugget, but so that, that's continuing for me into 2021. So my, my biggest holding right now is DMYD, which is um, Genius Sports. And Genius Sports is, if you're unaware, there's basically a duopoly of sports radar and uh, genius sports that basically sell all of the real-time live feed data to uh, sports betting apps bookies etc they have 40 percent of the market and sports radar has quite a bit of the rest they've got all the players like nba pga tour a lot most of your european soccer leagues because it is a european company nascar uh, ncaa they got march madness so any uh, of the the betting platforms that want to incorporate that into their apps or whatever, they got to buy the data from or, or have a partnership with Genius Sports. It's going to be phenomenal if, like, if you, if you with Hylion, the lack of PR, like, it's, it's literally if you Google Genius Sports and then click the news tab on Google, you, there's first partnership after partnership after partnership, uh, press release after press release after press release. That's going to continue because they're a fairly young company. Actually, they were formed in 2016. Um, so Genius Genius Sports is my biggest holding. And then I'm, I'm real bullish on uh, Lion Electric as well. Ticket symbol NGA, which is a, here again, it's not a pre-revenue company. This is a an established EV bus making company out of uh, Quebec, Canada that have got manufactured in place. They uh, make their own batteries. They're building a battery plant actually as we speak. So a super established company. They beat out all of the companies that, that make EV buses, they again are making all the right partnerships. They've connected with ChargePoint. They connected, I don't know why they connected with Blink Charging, but so now if they contract for some buses or their trucks, then they become a reseller for ChargePoint or Blink. You can buy the chargers. So they sell the whole package now. And, and then they also, you know, they've got some deals struck with Amazon, small deals and stuff like that. I like them because they're an established company. You're not guessing, you know, that revenue's coming in. And once they go public, you'll be able to sit through 
and listen to some earnings calls where there's actual earnings. You know, it's not like with Nicola and Hylian where you're you're waiting, you're sitting on the sidelines waiting for things to occur. So that would be my number two for 2021. And then also like uh, STPK, which is a STEM. That is a storage solution. It's an entire solution. It's mainly a software uh, SaaS company. They have AI software. They use OEMs to sell the whole package. So you can get a, a whole like uh, solar package installed via STEM. And it's just, they kind of tick all the boxes because if you if you look at the, the energy space, like if you look at one that was slept on was EOS Energy or EOS, I'm, or I'm maybe pronouncing it incorrectly. That particular spec was slept, slept on. And after it went public, it's still going. It's running, it's 25, 30 bucks now. It was a uh, nickel large solar and utility storage play. This is a similar play. This is, it, but STEM has partnerships or deals with like Adobe and some big players, Bed Bath and Beyond. They got their foot in the door with some big players already, uh, S and P 500 type companies, and they'll continue. If it's, you know, because all of these companies are going to want to be more green. They're going to want to be more, you know, uh, and this and their their software really does. I mean, if you look at the deal they struck with Adobe at, at Adobe's corporate headquarters, they use STEM's AI software and it saves them crazy amount of money. A couple, you know, maybe I think it was something like one hundred thousand dollars a year in savings because of how it how the software works. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.